This one's a bit longer than the others, so get comfy, sit back, and enjoy. And that leaves the display register. I made some modifications to the display register. Uh, we still have the unsigned decimal and signed decimal. I added an unsigned hexadecimal and an unsigned octal display. I used the same technique that Ben used to uh, use a ROM to decode the numeric values that you feed into the address into the data for or the LED segments for each uh, digit in the number. Uh, you can toggle the modes by pressing this mode button and uh, it goes through the, the four different modes all the way back to unsigned. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of neat about Logisim is you can um, change the values in the registers and your ROMs and RAMs and all of that. So if we want to see some something a little more interesting here, we can change the value here of this register. As long as we've got this icon selected, we can just click on the register. And uh, let's put in something interesting like, uh, how about FF? So we can see that in unsigned integer, uh, FF is 255. Uh, in signed, it's a negative one. In hexadecimal, we already know it's an FF. And in octal, it's 377. So um, not only can you set the values of the registers and flip-flops and whatnot, uh, it's also very easy to inspect uh, the, what's going on and the values on some of these buses. So for example, we can click here and we can see a binary representation and a signed integer representation of this 8-bit value. Um, if we wanted to look at the counter output from the t-state counter, uh, that's 3 bits. So there's our 3 binary bits and right now it's outputting a 0. So um, it's really easy, make, helps debug and um, you can um, also identify where um, common buses are for example, if I select the W bus, it highlights every instance of, or every place where the W bus is connected, um, and uh, sometimes that's helpful. Before we do that, there's one other thing that's been bugging me down here. Um, I'm going to choose the um, icon here, and uh, sometimes when you're moving stuff around, this happens, and it can't figure out uh, how the spacing is, and this. This is kind of a rat's nest, but uh, it, uh, it's pretty easy to move this. Just select it and then drag it over, and there, that makes it look a little better. So to uh, execute our first program, um, Ben Eater uses a program called The Meaning of Life, and if you've read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, you'll recognize this reference. But let's go ahead and load that program into memory. And uh, here's the meaning of life. And before we execute it, let's take a look and see what that uh, program actually does. Here's the listing of our program. In this column, we have the assembly language. In this column, we have the address. Notice it goes up by one each time. In this column, we have the machine language, or the opcodes. This column holds comments about what the program does. This program has two numbers that are stored in memory locations 7 and 8, and they're called number 1 and number 2. Beginning at address 0, the program loads the accumulator from RAM, and in this case, the location specified by number 1. The next step loads the B register from RAM and at address number 2. Next we add the B register to the A register and then that result is stored back in the A register. Next we output the A register to the display register and finally we halt. Alright, here we go. 
Uh, you'll recall that we did load our program into RAM previously. Uh, I don't think we've seen what the editor looks like, but it uh, does provide a nice editor for editing the contents. Uh, you could compare these values to those in the program listing we saw just a minute ago. And uh, let's close here. So um, let's begin by giving everything a reset. Um, we need to choose this icon. It's always a good idea to make sure everything starts in a reset state. And let's just take a quick look at everything just to remember where we are. Uh, the program counter is at memory location zero. Um, the uh, control signals are set for a fetch which is the program counter out and the address in. That's the first half of the fetch. Uh, we're in T0 which also tells us we're in the first half of the fetch. Let's set that back to unsigned. And um, so um, you saw me toggling the reset switch here which uh, does the reset. We do have a run stop switch here. Uh, I'm going to save that for a little bit later and uh, we'll just go ahead and single step through the program. It's not very long so we can uh, observe all the different uh, operations that take place. So if we do this first step uh, what's going to happen is we'll see the contents of the program counter, which right now are zero, going into the address register, which right now is zero. So it's not going to be very exciting, but uh, we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. We see that we advance to T1. T1 has a, an increment the program counter. It has an instruction register in and a memory or RAM out. So we're going to be outputting the contents of this memory, which also happens to be zero, so uh, we're not going to see a whole lot of lights here just yet, and that's going to go into the instruction register. So we'll do that step, and now uh, we do have a T2 state here uh, where we're going to read the value from memory that we're going to be putting into the accumulator. So that's a program counter out and an address register in. So this time uh, we'll be putting the 1 in the program counter, because it was incremented just a moment ago, into the address register. Now we see the contents of memory location 1, which is a 7, which is the location of our first number in memory. And uh, if we do this uh, memory read, or address register read, and now we're outputting the number, which in this case is a 1C, and we're putting it in the accumulator, uh, the A register, which is right here. So we've uh, finished our first instruction. We're back at T0, and we've accomplished loading uh, the contents of memory location 7 into the A register. So now if we step through the next instruction, again, we'll be moving the program counter into the address register, so we'll see that 2 go in there. And then we're going to be moving this instruction into the instruction register. So that moved over here. And now for this instruction, this is loading the B register, we have a T2 where again we're going to do a memory read. And then that's the second half of our memory read and then we're going to load the contents, which in this case is a 0E, and put that in our B register. So now we've got our two numbers loaded, and we're uh, just about ready to do the addition. So again, we're back at T0, so we'll do the fetch. That's two steps. We'll do the first part, and then we'll do the second part. And now we have our instruction in the instruction register. It does have a T2 state. Let's see what we're doing here. We're doing an output from the ALU and we're doing an output from the B register. So uh, we're doing something with the B register. So we'll go ahead and step that. And then we're going from temp out, which is the result, and we're going into the A register. So this is the results of our addition going into the A register. So we just did our add B instruction, and we'll be moving on now to the output instruction. So we'll single step 
single step. And now we'll see that we're doing an A register out and a display register in. So we'll step that through and we see our answer which is 42 and uh, that was uh, the end of that instruction there was, were no other T states for that one so now we're at the halt instruction so if we go ahead and step through that fetch the instruction uh, this is a halt we can see and now um, if we continue hitting step nothing happens because the halt signal is activated which uh, stops the clock from uh, triggering. So that was our first program. Uh, if you want to see it run automatically, I said would uh, do the run stop. So we'll reset it again to get rid of our halt. Uh, and then this time I'll hit the run stop. And uh, if you watch the clock, it's going about four times a second, I think. So uh, it'll be a little bit fast, but if you watch real close, you might be able to follow along. Uh, here we go. And basically we'll just be waiting for the halt indicator to come on up here to let us know that we're done. And there we go. We have our answer. All of this content is available on my GitHub repository. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future videos in this series. And as always, thanks for watching.